Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. This is part two of lesson 4.7. Only one objective for this video. We are going to look at evaluating some compositions of trig functions. Remember, if we take a function and do function composition with its inverse, then the answer we get back is just gonna be whatever our x value was that we started with. So with this one, we've got f composed with the inverse of f of x, and all we get left over is that x value. We could also set this up the other way, the inverse of f composed with f of x, and we still get that same x value back. So talking about some inverse properties when we're looking at trig functions. So let's say we're looking at x values between negative one and positive one, and y values between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Then if we did the sine composed with an arc sine of x, we should get back just whatever that x value was. Similarly, if we were doing the arc sine composed with a sine of y, then we should just get back that y value. Things change just a little bit when we're looking at cosines. We're still gonna look at x values between negative one and positive one, but this time we want our y values to be between zero and pi. Well then if we did a cosine composed with an arc cosine of x, we're gonna get back just that x value. And likewise with that arc cosine composed with the cosine of y, we'll get back that y value. For our tangents, x can be any real number, and y has to be between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, then the tangent composed with the arctangent of x is just that x value, and the arctangent composed with the tangent of y is just whatever that y value is. Now we do need to make sure that our y values fall within those intervals. Like on this example, if we were talking about a sine of three pi over two, well, the sine of three pi over two is negative one, but if we then did the arc sine of that, we would get back the answer negative pi over two, because remember those output y values have to be between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, and negative pi over two isn't technically the same thing as three pi over two. So we do need to pay attention to those interval restrictions on those x and y values. Taking a look at our first example, we've got the tangent of the arc tangent of 25. Now this represents an x value, and we said those x values in this instance can be any real number, so this one's gonna work out. So doing the tangent and the arc tangent of this 25, essentially what's gonna happen is that tangent and arc tangent are just gonna cancel each other out, and we get 25 as our final answer. Taking a look at our next one, it's very similar to that top one. We've got the sine of an arc sine of negative point Two. Again, this represents an x value, and for these arc sines, we said the x values had to be between negative one and positive one, so this fits in that interval. So basically, just like the top one, the sine cancels out with the arc sine, and we just get negative point two. With our last example, we've got an arc cosine of the cosine of seven pi over two. Now this represents a y value if we're talking about the stuff we were doing on the last page, and we said those y values had to be between zero and pi. And right now, this seven pi over two is not between zero and pi. So we need to make a couple changes. I'm going to subtract off a rotation, and I'm gonna do that off to the side. So I'm gonna take seven pi over two, and I'm going to subtract off a two pi rotation. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna need common denominators. So I'm gonna make this four pi over two. Then if we carry out our subtraction, we get three pi over two. So I'm gonna replace this seven pi over two with that three pi over two that we just found. Now there's still a little bit of a problem with this one because we said the y values for this cosine stuff had to be between zero and pi. Well, three pi over two isn't between zero and pi. So when we run through and evaluate this one, we're gonna end up with a different answer than this three pi over two or our seven pi over two that we started with. So I'm looking at the unit circle. The cosine of three pi over two is zero. But then if we do the arc cosine of zero, remember for the arc cosine, we're looking at the top half of our unit circle. Well, the place where the x value there or the cosine is zero happens at pi over two. So since this angle was not in our zero to pi interval, we ended up with a different answer than what we started with. Now, these next few examples are gonna look a little bit different because we're mixing trig functions together now. We're doing a tangent of an arc cosine in this example. So I'm actually gonna use a right triangle drawing to help me out. So I'm just gonna draw this out. First thing I'm looking at is we've got an arc cosine of two thirds. So what that means is we're looking for some angle theta such that the cosine of theta 
is two thirds. Now we're looking on the top half since we're doing an inverse cosine. This is positive, so that tells me that we have to be in the first quadrant. So I'm gonna let theta be the angle right next to the origin. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse when we're dealing with right triangles. We could do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem to find this missing third side. It ends up being the square root of five. So now if we were looking at evaluating all of this, looking at this arc cosine of two thirds, we said that was gonna give us some angle theta and we just drew a picture to help us represent theta. Now all we have to do is look at the tangent of theta. So tangent is opposite, which is root five over adjacent, which is two. So there's our answer for this one. We use the inside arc or inverse cosine stuff to help us draw the picture, and then we evaluate the outer function. Taking a look at example B, we've got the cosine of an arc sine of negative three fifths. So I'm focusing on that inner arc sine stuff to help me draw my picture for theta. Rewriting this, we would say the sine of theta equals negative three fifths. Now we're looking at the right half since we're doing an arc sine and this is a negative value so that tells me that our triangle has to be down in the fourth quadrant. We're gonna let theta be the angle right next to the origin. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. A little bit of Pythagorean theorem would tell us that this other side is four. So we end up getting some theta value from our inner stuff. Now we're just gonna evaluate the cosine of theta using our picture. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we get four fifths. This last example is gonna be just a little bit different. We're gonna use this picture down below and an inverse trig function to write theta as a function of x, meaning we want a theta equals equation at the very end. So taking a look at what we've got, theta's down here on the left, We've got four and x as a couple of sides. Now if we look at how this is set up, four is adjacent, x is the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse means we're looking at a cosine. So if we did the cosine of angle theta, we would go four over x. Now according to what we were saying earlier, we want theta to be all by itself. So in order to get rid of this cosine on here, we have to use inverse operations, just like addition and subtraction cancel each other out, multiplication and division, those things cancel each other out. In order to cancel out a cosine, we're gonna use an inverse cosine on this stuff. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. So we have to take the inverse cosine of the right-hand side. Now this inverse cosine cancels out with the cosine and we get theta equals. Not much we can do over here since we don't know what the x value is. So I'm just gonna leave it as the inverse cosine of four over x. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.